Hello, in this video I'm going to say a few things about hardware and what to look at if you want to edit videos and uh, do it faster. Um, let me explain. So this is the camera, this uh, shoots 4K, uh, the Sony FX3 and uh, it's very high uh, rate and you can see this on the internal disks. Uh, they have about 1 gigabps uh, bandwidth. Those are some disc, uh, discs, they are amazing. Uh, there are other types of discs like those which are called RAID and they have uh, redundancy so even if a disc fails it will not uh, lose files. And so I'm going to say a few things now because uh, there are so many options uh, so you have to know some basic kind of um, software engineering architecture things uh, so you, that you don't buy stuff that uh, doesn't matter so uh, here are disks uh, external disks okay and then uh, here is where typically your large files will uh, live so this is uh, either the camera or an external disk and probably you will store them there because you need terabytes of those files and then um, through USB or something or Thunderbolt uh, these files will enter your computer right so this is a type of computer and then the computer has the internal disk and then it has a CPU memory and then it has the graphics card and all those are cool uh, it's important to understand the bandwidth so a file editing uh, like um, Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere video editing software, it, it's all algorithms and they are all related to this part. Um, CPU graphics card, um, that's that's cool. Uh, better algorithms might give some advantage to one over the other. But uh, at first, your biggest problem is this, because no matter what you do with your editing software, you will have to get the files from here and put them in there. And those are huge files and you will have to bring them in memory, right? And this uh, has to happen through the little external drive and the USB, uh, which is terrible. And all you care about this is basically the read throughput. And there is this uh, disk speed test uh, that is there for black magic. It's a great piece of software uh, and it tells you how fast your disk is. So let me explain what happens. This is the internal disk of this computer, right? You can see the read bandwidth is uh, 2 gigabps, almost 3. That's fantastic. That's the fastest you can get, pretty much. Super fast. Now, uh, a disk like this, those are pretty good. Look at this. So that's 780 and 829 in terms of read. Uh, so this is a ma a amazing uh, reading uh, power from those disks. So switching from something like this that I don't show you the benchmarks, but it's much slower for reading because it has to go through the camera, CPU, to USB and to the computer. So between storing the files here or in a slower external disk, having a fast SSD is a, is a very good um, starting point. Now, when we get to those kind of disks, the RAID disks, um, they are way slower because exactly they have this redundancy. You can see uh, this is probably what your laptop has uh, at, at the read stage um, from the internal disk. So 150 megabps. So 200, I don't know, 300. So it's important to know uh, this number. And for a ride, for, for those external disks with the redundancy, this is uh, very low. Okay. And this is especially if. Uh, the disk is rotating 720, I say there, that's low, but uh, I have SSD RAID and that's much faster. So this is SSD RAID, 1 gigabps and also very fast write. Uh, this is also cool. Um, very, very important. This is your first part here. So the higher uh, is, is, I guess, like 1 gigabps or something. Um, that's cool to, to make sure with this tool that you are transferring the files very fast from the external disks to the internal disks and pick a disk that gives you those files fast. But uh, the best thing is to keep the files on the internal disk, right? Uh, because we said the bandwidth of the internal disk is always 
typically anyway, much faster uh, than the external ones, especially if it's an SSD. The problem with this is that uh, it's usually very s uh, small, so uh, one terabyte or many times it's half a terabyte. I have another older laptop, it has a quarter of a terabyte, right? Um, so you cannot store those external files in there and have the operating system running and all that. So uh, what you have to do, obviously, is proxy files. But look, if the proxy files live here, which will happen under some settings, this means that still you will have to go through USB. You don't want that. You want the proxy files to be stored in the internal disks, which means either you have to do some configuration on your software or you have to uh, store your project basically on the internal disk. I always do that. And uh, so if your files, uh, proxy files are here and they're enough to fit in the disk that you have internally, that's pretty much uh, what will make you very uh, fast. Of course, that means that you will not be processing 4K, you will probably uh, processing 1K, so full HD, and probably you might have to drop the quality so the compression will be more uh, higher. Uh, but in any case, the smaller this becomes, the proxy file, uh, the, the faster you are going to edit the, uh, the whatever you're doing, and that's the best. And now, when when we get here, it's funny because this is where we typically focus when we buy a computer or we talk about which software to use. Graphics cards, CPU and, and uh, memory, um, those end up being the ones that uh, matter the least when it comes to editing. Uh, of course, when you render at the end, depending on those specs, some will go faster and that will go flow slower. But you know, you have your project ready, you press render or export and you go do something else for two, three hours, <laughs> however much it takes. This is not your time uh, that is defined by those specs here. It's, it's computer time, typically. Uh, so those ones don't matter a lot, but basically I would say with what we use right now, 16 gigabytes of RAM is cool, some modern CPU is cool, and if you don't do 3D graphics, the graphics card, does it really matter? Probably not. To be honest, it doesn't matter. Don't go buy NVIDIA um, if you don't do deep fakes or stuff like that. Um, your, your graphics card does not matter that much, right? It matters a little bit, but not that much. The bandwidth between your disk and the CPU, uh, those matter a lot, but it's very hard to find those specs. So if you find a brand of a computer that is uh, very fast and has good reputation probably means the internal bandwidth between those things is fast uh, and and you cannot find uh, this easily out there in some spec somewhere so all only it comes down to is brand basically if it's a brand that says we optimize our computers for for video it means that they take care uh, they pay attention to those metrics and of course i have to say like myself uh, this one is an m1 uh, the one in there is an M2. I see a little improvement between M2 and M1. M1, though, is so much faster from previous uh, generations of Apple computers. I would say this one and this uh, laptop over here, this MacBook Pro, they are about as fast, and that's mind-blowing. And this one has 96 gigabytes. It has all the cores and the CPU and everything. So 3.2 gigahertz, 16 core Intel, and yeah, this one feels at least as fast. And that's annoying because this was a very expensive one. Uh, but probably if I stretch this one with uh, doing very, very heavy operations, it will hold uh, stronger. But for editing 4K videos, this one, M1 MacBook Pro with uh, 32 gigabytes RAM, absolutely amazing. So, um, this is what happens. I think like uh, changing your software um, might give some improvements or not. Number one thing, pay very much attention with a tool like Disk Speed Test uh, of Blackmagic. Pay so much attention on the bandwidth that you have from your external disk to the internal disks. And if you want to get rid of that problem altogether, uh, use uh, proxy files, compress uh, enough so you can store them in the internal disks. And there is this uh, pretty much not that critical. Anyway, I hope uh, you find this useful. 
Thanks for watching.